Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Targeting the Youth, and today we shall discuss Dylan Cousins. I want to talk about Dylan once again, guys. So let's go into his small resume as of now. And I will get on my glasses, which I don't have on, obviously, as we're speaking. But the whole point of this, guys, is uh, I want to talk about his um, contract. So last time I did that with... Um, Samuelson, we wound up signing him. So I'm hoping that we're going to do the same thing with Dylan Cousins. That's the point of this video. All right, so let's take a look, guys. His first season, half a, se half a uh, season played, 41 games, four goals, nine assists, a minus 15. Then the next year, uh, last year, in his rookie season, really, I would say, I know it wasn't, but technically speaking, I mean, you know, 40 games played, it was COVID season. Anyway, I guess it wasn't his rookie season. But anyway, uh, 13 goals, 25 assists, 38 points, and a minus 19. But look how he's come into his own this year, guys. In 30 games played, 11 goals, 20 assists for 31 points, and a plus 3. Leading as our number 2 centerman, the youngest line in the entire NHL. And we will look at his last 10 games. And there you see it. This is where the numbers are starting to fall into place, guys. If you look, six goals and 10 assists the last 10 games. Just impressive. And minus six there. So let's see here. So in, and he's a plus two. I just did a quick calculation of that. Yeah, you know, I am just, I can't tell you how much more and more I'm getting. And then people say, yeah, but he only has three hits. Guys, keep in mind, this is Granado's system. It's not what Dylan wants. If Dylan had his way, I'm sure he'd be throwing his body way more. So six goals, 10 assists, the last 10 games, I find that this kid is coming into his own finally. Which is normal. Which is normal. It took him about 10, 120, 30, 140. It took about to the 140 to 150 game mark of his career for him to have the best 10 games of his career. So this is finally happening with this kid. But guys, we know, we know he was snake bitten this year. We know, we seen, come on. There was how many games this year where Dylan could have had two goals, three goals in a game, and he walks away with zero because he hit like a crossbar and a goal post. And, you know, he just, he was snake bitten. Now he's starting to find the net. And I think, I still think, like I called him to get 30 goals this year. I still think he's going to do it. I think he's going to get 30 goals when it's all said and done. We're going to have him with 30 goals. We're going to have Skinner with 30 goals. We're going to have Tage with 50. It's getting scary, guys. We're going to have Olofsson, who should hit 30. If he doesn't, we got to move Olofsson then. We do. We can't do the inconsistent thing where he starts good every year, finishes good every year, and he's crap in the middle all year. We can't do that no more. We just can't. You know, Olofsson's paid to score goals because he doesn't do anything else. So he needs to start scoring. I don't care what line he's on. A natural goal scorer will find the net. So he hopefully will get on a roll. We need Olofsson on a roll. But I have 10 times more faith in this guy. I just do, you know, when it comes to like everything, ability, scoring, everything. I got more trust in Dylan Cousins. Dylan Cousins is an absolute stud, guys. And I can only imagine what he's going to help Quinn and Paterka with their games, elevate their games. I mean, it's weird to think they look up to him. You know what I mean? It's just weird to think that. But when you see Dylan Cousins still isn't shaved or anything, it's just crazy uh, how young this team is. Youngest team in the entire NHL. I still can't get over that when I heard that. I said, wow, that is nuts, you know? So not bad, not bad, not bad. I think he is absolutely the real deal. And the reason for the video, I'm going to talk about it now, guys. We got to talk about a Dylan Cousins contract. And if Adams... I'll tell you what, if, the, if they give out Dylan Cousins an extension in the next few weeks, that means <laughs> they do watch my videos because it's too much of a coincidence, right? But, I, you know, if we, if we have to wait to the end of the year, then we wait. But I would prefer Adams to lock this guy in now, get him at a good rate before he continues to explode because he's going to, okay? He's going to. And if Cousins probably is thinking the same thing, that he might just hold out, but... We have such a, an atmosphere, a gentleman atmosphere in this organization now that I'm sure if he sat him down and said, listen, Dylan, we want to talk to you about an extension now. I'm sure he'd be open-minded to it, you know? 
And I would say, guys, lock them in for, uh, you know, seven, eight years. I would do the whole thing, seven, eight years. And I would give them, um, it's, it's a tough number to come up with, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say six. I'm going to say six million a year because I think he's going to be worth that, this guy, in the future. I do. If we can get him around the six million dollar mark, five and a half, to six, okay? Somewhere in that ballpark, lock him in. Get him locked in. He's a huge piece of our future. He's gonna be a guy, I'm sure, down the line, if we lock him in for five and a half to six million a year, we're gonna look at it and say, my God, what a deal Adam's got on this guy also. Adams is smart enough, I think, also to be thinking this way, to get these guys locked in ahead of time because Dylan Cousins, guys, is. He's just a major piece. He just is. And, you know, if we looked at his numbers now, we'd say, well, he doesn't really deserve that kind of money yet. No, no, but I'm talking, pay him for what he's going to become. I'm not thinking these numbers right now, except this year. This year's numbers, yes, are kind of worth it, you know, but it's a small sample size. So if we can get him anywhere under six, okay, I'll be happy. I will be. Anything over six, that's his overpayment. So we don't want to go there either. We don't want to start giving this guy seven when Tage is making it. No, no, we don't want to go there. So I'm thinking like, let's say five between six. There's the sweet spot, guys. What do you think? Five between six, six being the max. I don't think we'll get this guy under five million a year. I just don't. If, if Dylan Cousins signs long-term with us for four and a half million bucks a year, I don't know what Adams is feeding these guys. Feed them more of it because you know, he's, he's going to be worth much more than that. So like, I, I'd be thrilled you know, if we can get him for that price. So I'm thinking um, let's go uh, seven years at uh, ah, five, five, uh, five and a half. I'll go with the five and a half actually. Let's go five and a half. So seven years times five and a half, do you think that's worth it. And do you think he'll sign for it? Would he sign that deal? It's a tough one, guys. It is. I don't know if he'll go for it, but now's the time to do it because his value is only going to get like this. And then it's going to get to the point, you know, if we're smart, we're going to lock these guys in way ahead of time. The ones that we know have the potential. He shouldn't be waiting to see the numbers, Adams. He actually should be sitting down with Granado and Granado saying, this guy is a 30 goal guy. Lock him in now, if you can. Get him, get him now. He's gonna be 30, 35 goals a year. He's gonna be one of our rough and tough customers. He fights, he's not scared to play the hard nosed game, this guy. Gotta get him locked in. This to me is what you call guys, what you want in the playoffs, a guy like Dylan Cousins. That's the type of player you want on your team. In a game seven of a Stanley Cup series, you want a Dylan Cousins on the ice. A big centerman who's physical, not scared to fight, and can score and has good hands and good speed. Very deceptive speed, I might add, too. And his, sh his shooting is actually getting more accurate. So, you know, I, I don't want to say much more than that, guys. I'm going to leave it there. I'll let you guys discuss. And I shall see you when I see you in the next video because I'm still out of internet. See you then.